Hello everybody, this is the part one of the um, Elf J amplifier build and the part one is going to be the power supply and in front of us we have a power supply PCB from DIY Audio and I've taken off this section which is the rectifier section um, we're not going to be using that we're going to be using just this and I'm going to build it up um, just show you how to do that I'm going to use what we need to do is jumper out these boards this becomes a zero and we need to jumper these out and what I intend to use is a bit of copper enamel copper wire and I'll take this enameling off and I'll just bend up some links to jumper across those two contacts. So the enamel wire, copper wire, it has a <coughs> coating on it and all I do is just use a sharp knife and just scrape off the copper wire straight, straight, straight off the enamel off the copper wire and that leaves a nice uh, I think this is 1.2 millimeters thick um, but it's more than adequate and what we're going to do is get a section Let's chop that end off and you just bend up one end measure and mark if you like bend that end up us chop him off little tweak and there we have a nice link on that one let's do another one for the other end you could also use a bit of um, wet and dry grit paper does the same job probably does a better job but this is what I've got to hand Okay, and use a pair of pliers just to line it up. Get it in the hole. Just like that. In actual fact, what I'm going to do, change my mind here, doing it on the fly. I'm going to put this in from the bottom. And the reason for that is uh, I want to utilise. The spade holes, these are for the spades, which we'll come to in a second. 
Uh, but for now, we'll just do a little bit of soldering. There you go. Now uh, just trim off the excess off, off the top. And I'll do the same the other end and we'll be back. Right, the other end. Get a nice joint, get a bit of solder in there, make sure it flows, flows through. Go and chop this end off here, tidy it up, there we go. What I could do is drop a bit of solder in the top. Like that. Same this side. Spin it round. Same this side. Lovely. So there's our links for the zero line. Uh, I'm there going to go and put some of these stand. I like to use standoffs. Um, I don't use a, a clamp, PCB clamp. Uh, I've always used my hands in the bench uh, on these. And what I've got is some. These are seven mil, seven mil standoffs. And some little 3M screws, and I've got some washers, spring washers. That I'll use, and that'll hold it firm. So we just go along, and spin these on, just like that, nice and tight, and that will stand proud of the the workbench uh, whilst I'm working on it. So I'm going to carry on and do that. We'll be back soon. So that's that one done. Uh, obviously this is the negative side. This is the positive side. This is the negative side. So this LED goes in another way round. Uh, I'll put in this the wrong resistor. So we'll have a little clean up. We've got a few little snippets here. Keep them out of the way. Keep the bench clean. Just like that. So we're going to mount, move into Dropping in some resistors, uh, I have some of various, these are uh, from Farnell, uh, these are R47, 3 watt actuals, produce those, I have some of these from Mauser, uh, I have others as well. Um, I need to put these in. These are bleed-off resistors. 
uh, 2k2 3 watt and they go between the positive and negative rails and ground or the zero volts and then the bleed off these uh, drain the power in the capacitors once you've powered off uh, they just bleed down so these are actually more than adequate and they go in here just leave a gap underneath I don't know is that 5 mil something like that because uh, they do tend to get warm whilst they're doing their job do it by eye uh, some people use a spacer uh, I've been doing it a long time I can do it by eye and again once they're in do a bit of soldering let the heat do the work the bleed off resistors in then we've got some 3 watt point four sevens to go so now we're going to drop in these uh, well, I don't know what you call them really I think they're ripple resistors they're R47s, these are 3 watts, 1%, a bit over the top really, but um, that's what I ordered. Uh, and we need 5 each side. And again we've got to leave a, a little gap underneath, <coughs> just like that. That's laborious. There you just go along. Uh, fitting these five per side boring 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 so I will carry on doing that uh, and I'll come back when I've soldered all that lot in so we'll just pop those in Bit of a soldering exercise now. None of these components that I'm using here are exotic and or expensive. They are run of the mill uh, available from most places. Probably these Resistors here are a bit over the top, they're 1%, they're slightly dearer, but it's pence, uh, pennies. Um, and I just put in a bulk order, I've got all sorts. Um, other power supplies, I've used other types of resistors or components. Doesn't seem to make a blind bit of difference in this application. Uh, Mr. Pass quite often states you know if you want to use exotic stuff by all means do so but there's no requirement for for you to do so uh, so that's a quick soldering exercise uh, I'll nip these off do the other side and I'll come back so we're now gonna put some male spades on the PCB so that we can connect up some power to it at a later stage uh, this is your typical male spade uh, and it just so happens that they're ideally 
suited for this purpose you didn't have to you could actually solder the wire directly through these holes um, there's a conjecture that these aren't the best uh, type of connection um, a direct soldered joint for the wire or the conductor is best now, they they have a a point uh, some of these can be a bit tricky to push in they just need a little bit of a little bit of help just to seat properly they just seat them off like that and uh, if I was to turn this over and solder them some of them might drop out so what I tend to do is at this stage I just drop some solder on this joint or on a joint just to hold it flood it through like that nice and neat now that won't go anywhere do the others Now I'm going to come to this in a second, I'm going to show you something. Said the, said the bishop. I'd like to show you something. Do you know what I mean? If I was to flip this board over to solder it, these would drop out, or this particular one. So we're just going to make sure it's in situ from the top of the board as opposed to the bottom. Nothing wrong with it at all. We'll look at that in a second. Now let me come back to what I was just saying about these spades and these connectors. Uh, there's the mail. This is, if it will focus, come on just right, there it is. There's the female and we just force join them together. Uh, this one uh, if you can see that it's been crimped and soldered a lot of people just crimp them and leave them like that uh, I don't think that's good enough and this is a reason why if you don't get a very good connection either on this crimp or on the spade connection itself there's a little bit of an air gap and it starts tracking arcing and it melts now i can tell you from experience that this is a very cheap bought from china mistakenly i use these cheap female spades and they're very flimsy very thin um, as opposed to a proper one uh, this was purchased uh, I think this is an RS one. It's in a different league altogether when you actually look at the, the manufacture of it and the thickness of the material. This cost me a drive unit and one side of an F5 power amp just blew out straight away. This was the, the positive feed to the power amp board from the power supply. This dropped out uh, and it just took out the whole power amp board along with the JFETs, MOSFETs, uh, various other resistors blew it up and also took out the drive unit as well. And I can show you that. And it blew out this, completely destroying it, uh, burnt out this coil, and unfortunately uh, the company's now got so Scandinavian Audio Labs, 
Fortunately, he's gone out of business and I can't get this done at the moment. I'm sure I can get this redone at some stage, but I'm so brassed off I haven't bothered at the moment. Uh, I'm using something else. So that can be the consequence of not getting a good gas tight air tight seal on uh, these connections. Anyway, by the by, that's just in passing. Use quality kit. Now, I've just shown you this. This hasn't been soldered yet. This has just been crimped on with a crimp tool, or the ratcheting crimp tool that crimps it on. And I will just put a blob of solder on there to make sure there is a, a gas tight seal between this female spade and the wire itself. Uh, so just a, a note of caution. So on this end of the power supply board I'm using these uh, connectors, screw down pinchers. Um, so we've got two boards left and right, so I'm going to use just two, not three. I've got three here, uh, there's good reason for that. This is the zero line. Uh, so we have one going to the left channel, one going to the right, and we also have a CL60 the rest of that bolts down to the chassis so that'd be ideal this one's not used and this is a positive one to the left and one to the right and that's all we need here uh, so i will carry on solder those in be back soon so i've soldered these on and as i stated this zero forms the green zero here so now we come down to the nitty gritty uh, we got some we got to put some capacitors on the board um, I'm using these uh, they are just general purpose um, 35 volt 33,000 microfarads uh, digikey do them uh, mauser do them uh, they're not overly expensive and now I've got these from mauser and there's the part number as you can see 33k 35 volts at 20 20% 105 degrees so these drop in as per if you look at the board we've got positive and the band symbol is greyed out so they go in just like that This side is positive, this side is negative. This is the negative, sorry, this is the negative band on the capacitor. So they go in like that. So I just have to have another bag here. The big reveal in true YouTube fashion. Oh, there you go. Oh, what a mess, what a mess. Um, just a quick visual inspection make sure everything looks okay they're fine and just carry on stuffing the board as they say they are a snap fit so they just push in very neatly very snug thus turn the board round and again noting Noting this is a negative, here's a negative. Bit of polystyrene.
double check everything's in correctly we'll just swing him over and I'm gonna go along and do some soldering uh, a bit boring so I'll come back later getting a bit lonely here doing this thought I'll just share it with you let the heat do the work apply the iron apply some solder feed some solder in let it flood till you get a nice little peak it wicks up the tag on the capacitor not quite enough solder on that one there we go have to be a bit patient let the heat do the work This is coming to the end of this power supply build of the, this element of it. Um, we're going to go on in this video to do uh, an install of this, uh, power up, power it up, and test it. Make sure it does what it's supposed to. It should give us um, with 18 volts AC off the transformer toroidal transformer through the bridge rectifiers um, 18 volts times 1.414 should have around about the 25 volts something like that so whilst i'm here i just want to double check these spades that i put in originally which i flooded from the top i'm now flooding them from the bottom just to make sure there's a, a good connection one at a time that'll do us so there is not too much splatter I'm going to give this a wipe with some flux off uh, but quite a nice neat job at the end of the day hopefully that bit might be of assistance to some people Okie doke. I'm going to give this a little bit of a clean with some uh, flux remover. Don't need a lot, just a little squirt. And I'll wipe that down and that'll be all like spanking you back later. So the next phase um, is the building up of the power supply and you may have seen this before this is a typical single transformer bridge rectifiers and this is what we've just built this morning in about an hour um, and what we're going to do is something a little bit different uh, i haven't got a single transformer uh, of 400 va or plus but what i have got i've got two transformers of 250 VA so those two that would be a 500 VA transformer in effect and the reason I've done it like this is because at a later date what I propose to do is this 
which is a dual mono so you have um, two transformers four bridge rectifiers so it's a dual mono in one case uh, this outside line this represents the chassis now I'm going to be using the um, DIY audio deluxe 5u which comes with a, a separate inner chassis um, uh, you can just about squeeze this in and that's going to be our next um, part of the video which is this we're going to build this onto the chassis um, power it up I might build it up on the bench first just to make sure everything's before we decant it and start drilling holes in the in the, the main chassis base uh, I'll power this up on the bench take some readings make sure it's all working hunky-dory um, and go from there so the next bit is get the bits on the bench So there's the bits on the bench. There's our power supply we just built. We're going to have two bridge rectifiers. I'll just snip this out of the packet. I believe these are what they call Scotch key types. They're um, yeah, there they are. These. Got it. So we're going to have two of those. Uh, we're going to have two transformers. Packaging, packaging, plastic, plastic. I'll just get rid of this from the, for the time being. Right. Little washer goes on the bottom, washer goes on the top, mounting bracket. The bolt goes through the chassis, through the transformer, and bolts down. We have, I don't know if that's seeable. Come on, focus. There we go. So it's 250VA. Uh, I'm in Europe, so it's two 115s, which are series up to make 230, 240. 018 and 018 and what we're going to do in this case is couple up the zeros and couple up the 18s I've already done it on this one so I've twisted these together so the black and the orange come on get in there black and the orange are zero, the yellow and red, yellow and red are the 18, black and zero, black and orange zero, red and yellow 18 volts. Now I've got to go and put some connectors on the end of here, I don't want to bore you with it. Now I've twisted these together, I don't know whether there's any benefit to twisting them together, a lot of people Just zip them like that, I've noticed. Um, there is a thought that twisting them together is better. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Um, uh, I've got to wrestle with getting a spade on here. Uh, but let me do that and we'll come back. So I've Knit these together, focus, yeah, and flood soldered it. Same with that one. And we can pull the boots on. Yeah, that's so nice and safe, nice and tight. I haven't twisted these together and I will probably untwist the other transformer secondaries as well. That's a tight 
tight fit nice tight snug fit so there you go <clears throat> well, we'll move on well i'll do this transformer next and we'll come back to the mains so i thought i'd better show you how i do this uh, so these aren't quite these ends of these secondaries aren't quite long enough so i just nip off nip off just five mil extra without going through the conductor there you go uh, i've straightened the twist out as best i can this will do uh, and there we're going to fit a rubber boot and obviously the rubber boot is not going to fit over there very well so what i do i stick it on the enemy pliers there is a special tool for this a stretcher um, and i'll just pull it out like that and now i can feed that in there it just gives it enough so that i can feed that on there like that get me long nose in there give it a little tug there's the black bit fiddly there's the orange <coughs> i just do half a twist just half a twist pinch them together and because of the spades aren't big enough these are the ones i've got at hand they do go in but only just as you can see and i just nip that up i have got a proper crimping tool but the anvil was so worn out it doesn't do this properly so what i do is just pinch this pinch this up thus nice and neat or as neat as it can be not ideal very diy uh, i'll just dress that a bit better actually pull that over go and we're going to flood this with solder so that we have a nice gas tight or airtight seal You see it running. And the whole thing is flooded with solder, so might be touched too much in there, but we'll live with that. Pull that up. There we go. Turn with this one, pull that one up. There we go. So some nice soldered spades. And that's how we're going to do it. So both of the secondaries are done on these transformers. I'm going to go on to the primary. So Uh, we've got DC, we're connected across the bridge rectifier 018 there. We have 240 volts coming in off of our crocodile here. we got our CL60 in series. So this turns this in a 015 into 0115, 0115. It is now 0230. So brown blue is mains purple and gray is the series zero volts did you i'm ready There we go. So at 17 and a half volts, that's before it goes through the capacitor bank. When it goes through the capacitor bank, which we'll do in, a, in our next step. So we've checked out that from the mains here, this is all very temporary, just to check that everything's working. We're going to connect it to this capacitor bank. And on the other side, we should get around about the 24 volts. Um, but we've proved that this is up to this point it's all good 
um, we'll move on to the next step. So I've connected up both transformers to the mains now. Move a few bits out of the way and be safe. A bit of a clear up and we just check that we got 18 volts or thereabouts on both of these. So on that one we got 17.4. Move over to this one. And we got 17.4. So there was damn it. So that part of the exercise is complete on the bench. We can now connect this to this power supply module. So we've got the, the case chassis, chassis plate. Uh, I've drawn a couple of lines, which are the centre lines to the chassis plate. Just bear with me a second. I've got the cleaners in this morning, they're having the hoover through, so now a bit of a background noise there. <clears throat> so I, yes, I've drawn a couple of black lines to centralise visually where the centre of the, the chassis plate is. Uh, I've also marked, here's our power supply, I've also marked where I want it to be mounted. This is the back, the IC mains in. We have, um, I've already connected the CL60 which is our ground, <coughs> ground to chassis and our diodes, bridge rectifiers they're going to be going something like that and the location of the transformer is something like that so it's all symmetrical on the chassis so I've got to drill some holes for the, to mount the transformers uh, we've just got to bolt this through I will put a bit of paste uh, on here a bit of heat transfer of paste so that this becomes a heat sink for these bridge rectifiers so I'll be back soon when I've done that So I've drilled some holes, pop the supplied mounting screws on both of those. Got on some foam washers. Now pick up the transformers and we'll drop them on. Centralise them. For now just like that. I'm going to pop on another washer over the top. Bye eye. Sorry, I'll keep nudging the camera. Sorry if it's making you go a bit dizzy. Wind that down a bit. I want to do some faffing about with the wiring here because of the mains. I'll have to tuck that under in a second so that I can attach the mains to the oh damn. Should I see someone there? But you get the general gist. That's that's how we're gonna play it. Let's get the other washer and back nut. Lost the microphone and all that. Sorry. Try that, that might be better. Uh, so that goes on thus. Just right, so it's 11 minutes. I'll just wind this down a few turns, just make sure it's not going to move whilst I'm knocking this about now. I've got to turn it over. I'll do. I'm going to screw these down. 
as I said we're going to use a bit of heat paste uh, but in the meantime we're going to put on our power supply with some screws be back in a second so I turned the whole thing upside down lined up the power supply dropped in these are sorry M3s screw these up nice tight little nip plus and we'll just flip him over so that's the power supply the transformers uh, I've just got to find some bolts to bolt this down these uh, bridge rectifiers and do a bit of wiring and in effect that's the power supply element finished <clears throat> apart from a bit of wiring to the IEC mains so back soon so what I'm going to do is just put a bit of heat paste on the bottom of these doesn't need a lot too much is detrimental so just whack a bit on there but what I do is just get my finger and just give it a good smudge so you just want a smear just like that a smear of heat paste that's all that's required that's all you need wipe your hands obviously and then we'll go on to fitting these through the chassis it's not particularly easy this bit but it's off camera sorry So, what we're coming to is the end of building this power supply for this Alf J power amp or any other 25 volt DC volt supply needed for any A class of amplifier. So, I've made up some short, what's that, six inches with a female spade at each end. These are going to go, as you can see, I've already done it. Uh, from this one, we'll put it another way. <clears throat> from my schematic, we're going from here to the zero. We know we've connected these, bridged these, so this is zero volts. So this, although in this application up here, it's a positive. Here it becomes zero, and the negative is here. And this is the way I've wired it up. Um, so you can see... There's a green wire goes from there to the zero. From here it goes to the zero. The red, sorry, goes from there to the positive side. There. And this, I'm just about to connect this little six inch bit of wire onto this negative side of the power supply board make sure you've got a good connection that's all good so <clears throat> um, I don't know whether I covered here I've got uh, CL60 as per Mr Pass's advice it will be strapped to the case the chassis here we will also have an IEC connected up here somewhere as well um, but this is a <laughs> bear with me. This is a first power up of this, so all being well, there should be no drama, no aggro. If everybody's done everything correctly, exactly as this, and we just see uh, I'm just double checking everything in my mind and looking in front of me now, negatives and negative positive and positive the two zeros we know we've checked this previously we know we've checked this previously so everything adding all the sums together we should get two green leds spark up and we should get some hey hey no no issues whatsoever so you can see what 25 there's no load on this um there's 25.6 volts after rectification and going through these capacitors. This should be 
positive, so that's positive 25.7. This is negative 25.6, close enough for me. Um, so that is the power supply in effect completed and working. Uh, nothing's buzzing, nothing's getting hot. That's, that's as simple as it is. Uh, that's, um, I'm going to tidy all this up now and run a mains uh, from here, mains cable from here back because this, this end is the IEC end and we'll cover that uh, and that'll be the wrap up of this but for now I'll be back. So <coughs> I'm just going to do a bit of wiring at the mains. Uh, so I'm going to, this is the earth terminal. I'm just going to crimp this little blighter on here. that again that's better so there's our chassis earth which will go back to the IEC cable I'm just going to tin these this is going to go straight here this is going to go to the chassis earth and be back soon so There we have the completed chassis, which concludes. Sorry, which concludes part one of this build. So we've got the thruster strapped to, to ground here. There's a star washer under here, and under the bottom, under the bottom of the chassis. This is 13 amp copper mains cable that I've run round. Um, again this is the IEC, this will become the mains ground as opposed to the power supply ground up this end. Uh, this is a, a piece of rubber insulation because I've used a cheap connection block. There's nothing wrong with a cheap connection block, uh, but just be wary, isolate it from the chassis via some insulation. Uh, you can, you can just a few strips of insulation tape will do it. Um, if one of these comes loose, God forbid, and it did touch the chassis, it won't make it live. So it's quite safe. Also, I've put some sleeving on these mains into the, the transformers. So that is the end of part one. Uh, thanks for watching. I wish you well wherever you are in the world. Um, troubled times for everybody right now. Uh, we're in, in effect locked down in the UK. Nobody's allowed to leave home. Uh, quite rightly so too. If you are caught out and about and you haven't got a good excuse, uh, they're going to fine us. So in these times, it's always best to get the soldering iron out and do a little bit of DIYing. So it's Laverda, the implementer. Part two will be uh, building up one side of a power amp and powering it up off of this and an initial setup. Just one side. Right, thanks for now. Bye!